Good evening, everyone. Chris here at CaribbeanPod.com. I'm going to have to take one of these, these earphones off. It's kind of echoing in here. Um, by chance, can you guys hear me at all? Savvy? Um, anyone? Wonderful, Omari. Thank you so much for responding there. Let me just... Um, I'll just hang that up there on my pendant. Hello, everyone. Um, been away for a long time. We haven't had a, a recipe chit chat in, whoa, uh, maybe about five weeks or so. Um, back and forth dealing with some personal issues. <laughs> um, hello, everyone. Okay, I'm going to give some, some shout outs before we get started. All my needed glasses. <laughs> um, we've got Sharon Henry, Jam Zoe, Chuck Williams. Yo, Chuck, how you doing, man? Um, Afina, Tiny Whiny, Tam T. Yeah, guys, it's been a while. Um, I'm just going to go along with the format of the show as we usually do. For those of you first time joining in, in Recipe Chit Chat is basically... My live show that I try to, to do um, at least once a week, and it's usually Thursdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, the last little while, five weeks or so, dealing with, with personal issues. And about three weeks ago, well, back in November when I was at the um, Barbados Food and Rum Festival, I injured my right knee. Three weeks ago, I started doing some gardening, and I had a lot of dirt to move from the front of the house to the garden. And I guess I overcompensated on my my left knee. Both knees went on me. Um, couldn't move, was in constant pain and stuff like that. The left knee is fine now. The right knee I'm still struggling with. So couldn't stand, couldn't walk, couldn't do a lot of things. So I do apologize for that. I was in a lot of pain, so I really couldn't. You know, um, <laughs> my health is a priority, so I really couldn't jump on while I'm in pain on these live chats and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, um, for those of you new to the show, the format is basically we take a look at the recipes which would have been posted on the Tuesday on Tasty Tuesday. I take the questions and sort of feedback I get in the comment section, and we do this live show. Then the last part of the show we open up the floor for all your comments. Um, I'm seeing all your comments. I'm not ignoring you all. It's just that I really want to get with the um, with, with the show here, with the format of the show. Now, before we go on, I've got here a list of four winners. You know, the last show we had, I announced that there were two winners of the, must have been the cookbooks. This one here, and I believe this one here. Those two names, which were called, they never got back to me. So I'm guessing I gave them about four days. No, no one got back to me. So, so we're, we, we're gonna toss those names back, those prior, those giveaways back into the mix. I chose four new winners, and the two other winners are gonna get the the pepper mill. Pepper mill. You would have seen me use these in my video. There's been a lot of requests for people trying to buy it, where to buy it, and stuff like that. I came across those in the last show. I announced we're going to give away two of those. So first things first, the winners of the pepper mill. Let's get to that first. Then we're going to get to recipe, the actual recipe chit chat, and then we're going to open up the floor. So please hold off on um on the actual questions that you're posting right now do leave feedback hit that thumbs up hit the like hit all those things but specific questions you may have in regards to a recipe or a kitchen conundrum hold off a second until i open up the floor i, I don't have the manpower to go through all your comments and do the show at the same time um unfortunately your boy ain't big like that yet <laughs> you know what i mean so for the the green pepper mill and i just saw chuck over leaving a comment here 
Chuck Williams, you are the winner. Please contact me via CaribbeanPod.com. All winners, please contact me via CaribbeanPod.com. On the very top of CaribbeanPod.com, you're going to see contact. Send me your mail. Just tell me, Chris, I am a winner. You announce my name. Um, here's my mailing address. Without that, I can't really get it to you. So Chuck Williams, you're winner number one. The winner number two. We've got Donna Bryce. Donna, please hit your boy up um, on email. Let me know what your shipping address is. If you don't want it and you want me to pass it on any one of the winners, let me know and I'll choose another winner. For the world world's best brunches, we have Tiny Whiny. Tiny Whiny, you know who you are. You were on the last show that I did. You are a winner. Please contact me. And... Um, with your mailing address and finally easy cooking this cookbook here we've got a dash k francis a dash k francis so the four winners are chuck williams donna bryce tiny whiny a dash k francis please contact me via caribbeanpod.com um, email me there or email me directly chris at caribbeanpod.com and um, include your, your mailing address, and I'll get that out to you. Today, I have two new giveaways. If you guys can hold on by the title of the show or the um, the thumbnail, you would have seen six giveaways, I think I mentioned. So those are the four. We've got two more to give away, but we'll get to that in a second. Got some housekeeping to do. Um. I just wanted to address a comment I got after I posted the green seasoning recipe last week, I think it was, maybe Saturday, I believe. And um, I won't mention the person's name, and I won't mention, well, I won't mention the island that person is from, but they took it upon themselves to, to <laughs> the comment basically was, we don't do green seasoning like that in island. Um, <laughs> Island A, B, C, whatever you want to call it. Only Trinis do it like that. And what she meant was using Shadow Benny. Um, some of you may know it as um, Culantro. But here's the thing, and I wanted to be clear about it. Is um, First of all, it's not Trini. It's Trinbegonian. Um, represent two islands, Trinidad and Tobago. I love my Tobago people. They're my brothers and sisters as well. So um, it's Trinbegonian. First of all, as like I said, Here's the thing, when, when I post a recipe and I use the word Caribbean in there, it is because, you know, we have this sort of, yes, we are proud of each island where we're from, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. I, 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 yo, I highly encourage you to be proud of where you're from. But in the big scheme of things, to peep this for a second, there's about 55 million views, I think it is, on this channel, close to 500,000 subscribers. The website does about 600 to 700,000 page views. I collect with about 1.3 to 1.5 million people globally. The big scheme of things, most of these people don't care individually which island we're from. And that is why most of the times I use the word Caribbean because I represent, I try to represent the entire Caribbean. So when, when we're fighting up which island is better and, and who does what and what way, bigger scheme of things, it really doesn't matter on a global stage. We're still all from the Caribbean. And as far as I can remember, I think CARICOM and the West Indies still representing us as well, too. Um, the other thing is, now, when I do a recipe, especially with the Caribbean green seasoning, I, especially some like Caribbean green seasoning, and I expect you guys to do the same thing, too, use herbs and whatever in there that you like. You know what I mean? Um, it has to be personalized. So... Saying only Trinbegonians use Shadow Benny may be a bit uh, a bit flawed because on your island there may be people using Shadow Benny in their um, green seasoning. Not because you don't use it doesn't mean you say everybody on your island doesn't use it. Um, and please, when we speak Caribbean, don't forget the Spanish-speaking Caribbean and the French-speaking Caribbean. I know people in Haiti who make, well, of Haitian background, who makes a piece with Shadow Benny in there as well, too. It's not traditional, but they still do it. I know people from from um, Puerto Rico. When they're making their um, sofrito, 
Yo, that's a key ingredient in there. So don't tell me it's only Trini's making green seasoning with Shadow Benny. Um, it's one of those things, you know what I mean? Um, I didn't add ginger. I didn't add basil. I didn't add rosemary to it. Are you going to fault me for that? No, it's, you know, it's one of those things. I don't like those ingredients in there. I'm a huge fan of ginger, but I like adding my ginger fresh to whatever it is I'm cooking. And, and, you know, because green season is one of those things, you can season fish, pork, beef, chicken, poultry, um, vegetarian dishes you can you know, it's one of those versatile things you know what i mean and sometimes i don't want ginger in there but i may want ginger in pork or in chicken and maybe i don't want it in beef or i don't want it in fish so this is why i add my ginger later on so i just wanted to address that for a little bit now do keep in mind when you guys leave in your comments or i'm not trying to offend anyone i'm just saying a bigger scheme of things um, <laughs> we're global, man, and we got to start thinking global, you know what I mean? Nobody cares which individual island we're from and stuff like that, for the most part, you know what I mean? As far as question goes for the green seasoning recipe that I shared, um, one question seemed to come out quite, um, quite often um, on YouTube, on Facebook, as well as on Instagram. If you're not following me yet on Instagram, it is at Caribbean Pot. Um, jump on there. Um, and follow me. You can leave me questions and comments and stuff like that. I do a lot of live stuff as well, too, on there. The main question was, was why did I use olive oil? You know, a lot of people, they use water or they use um, uh, vinegar. Some people use lime juice or lemon juice. I started using olive oil when um, I, I didn't like the color um that the vinegar would give it after about a week it would start going grayish almost a green gray the vibrancy of it wasn't there anymore um the other thing is i found by using either vinegar or water it watered down the um the sort of flavors of the herbs and stuff like that which makes up that green seasoning so i started using olive oil and one, it gives it a brilliant color, helps retain the color for a longer time. And two, it does not affect the flavors. It, it sort of, in, if anything, it intensifies the flavors of the scallions, of the, um, uh, what else did I have in there? I had parsley in there. I had um, seasoning peppers. I had thyme. All those things, you know, for some reason or the other, I find it works better. And that's just my personal take. How you do it is totally cool as well. I'm not going to fault anyone for doing something the way they like to do it. You know what I mean? That's that's not the vibe you're going to get from me. Um, and the other question was, so I think I addressed the whole oil thing there. The other question is, since I used oil, you know, I feel like a secret service, service agent there, you know, touching my ears. Yes. <laughs> Um, can it still be frozen? Because a lot of people, they make, well, in my case, I I make extra. So I have a bottle that I use from in the fridge on a daily basis. Then the second batch, I have it um, in a freezer bag. When my bottle is done, I take that out, tore it out, pour it into the, into the bottle in the fridge, and then I rock that. Some people, and, I, and you know, sometimes I do it too. You can put it into an ice cube tray, pour it in there, freeze it, break it, separate them, put them into a freezer bag, and then every time you're going to season your fish, your chicken, your pork, your beef, whatever, you take out the cube, boom, you're good to go. Yes, you can still freeze it. Yes, it still will freeze. Um, someone also asked, um, question three was as far as shelf life. With the olive oil, that even the vinegar, even the water, um, if you use those things, Easily six months in the fridge, it will last. Um, it's one of those things that lasts for a very long time. So don't, don't fret too much about that. You have a long shelf life on that. Um, a comment was, I can't get. So let's say you can't get shadow bending. You can't get um, Spanish thyme. You can't get uh, one herb or the other. Um, just use what you have access to. It's one of those things that you can personalize to your own liking, which brings me on to the second part of that sort of comment or questions, um, which herbs should I use or can I use or, or whatever? Use what you like and what you can find or what's available to you. 
Yeah, it'll be cool, man. Um, it's one of those things, you know. I mean, you gotta develop your own liking and flavor. Um, and flavors dependent on your liking. So those were the questions we had in regards to the Caribbean green seasoning. I posted the uh, sort of a bonus video uh, a couple of days ago, and I and on Wednesday. Oh, that was yesterday. Wow, the curry chicken with um with body. Yeah, there was some. <laughs> Some weird comments for that one as well, too. Um, I've never seen that done before. That is, that shouldn't be done. Well, not because you haven't seen it done. Doesn't mean to say it isn't done. You know what I mean? Um, just keep that in mind. Um, and again, if you don't have body, you can use French beans, string beans, any sort of beans that you like using. You can rock whatever you have and whatever you like, right? I think that's it. I'm just going to open up. Um, oh, my guy, David, Abra, uh, Pastor David is on here with us, guys. I'm going to read some of your comments now. Um, <laughs> Rhea, Rhea, Rhea's, I love your curry body and chicken. Thank you so much. Chilling with the fam. <laughs> Thank you so much for the support, man. Donna, Donna, I mentioned your name earlier. I do hope you, um, you send me your mailing address. I'll have that out to you. Karen Samaru. My mom cooks body and chicken. Yeah, it's a normal thing, man. Um, just you know, some people will try to fight for find fault and try to to hit down. Uh, more gains. Yeah, well, that's one of the strong supporters. There, yes. Posad, all from Scarborough, Scarberia. Guys, so we we mentioned the winners now to mention what this week prizes. Well, not prizes, but giveaways are. And I have. Everybody into the whole cleanse thing. This one here is Soup Cleanse Cookbook. Embrace a better body and healthier you with a weekly soup plan. So this is um, giveaway number one. And to enter your name for the giveaway, you've got to leave a comment. If you don't leave a comment, I think it was the pepper mill, I believe. Um, you may need to, to to watch this video again once um <laughs> once it's all done. So yeah, we've got giveaway number one. You gotta leave a comment. If you don't leave a comment, yo, you yeah, you skylocking, you know what I mean? And the second one, yeah, that's me on there. <laughs> The hardcover copy of my cookbook, the one with the dust sleeve and everything. If you don't already own it, 100 recipes. Um, wow, I just kind of almost break up the um, computer there. We've got the page finder and all that stuff in there. 100 recipes on there. Um, guys, <laughs> it's probably going to be the first time I'm going to be giving away a copy of this book. And two, very, very few people have an autograph copy. So leave your name in there, um, and I will choose randomly um, who gets the cookbook one, who gets the soup cleanse. That will be announced. The winners, the winners for those two cookbooks will be announced in next Thursday show at 7 p.m. Eastern. So you need to tune in then. Once you leave a comment, tune in then. And um, we will choose two winners. Maybe one of you. Well, not maybe one of you guys will be a winner, right? Without being a comment on there. Um, we've got Angel Williams saying there's only one Caribbean restaurant in Colorado Springs. I love that, man. Thanks for the support. Um, Dare Jones wants to be. Hey, yeah, man. Um, so, guys, what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to open up the, the sort of floor now for any sort of questions that you guys may have. We've been going now for just under 20 minutes. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up if you guys don't mind. Share the video once it goes live. Not live, once it's uploaded, um, recorded, that is. If you guys could help me push this thing out there, that's greatly appreciated. Um, okay, we got all those things coming. Ah, my guy is asking, my boy is asking mango. I guess he means chow vinegar or nah. A definite big nah. I might even give you a stoops for putting vinegar in my um 
<laughs> in my mango chow. However, that said, the sort of acidity and sort of stuff like that, I get it from either lime juice or lemon juice. Try one or the other. You're going to like it a lot better, man. Um, can you do a video on how to make polori with dal and flour again, please? I have, I do have plans to make another polori recipe. It's just finding time. Uh, it's, it's chaotic here at times. So um, I, I will try to get to it. There's so many recipes I have in that to-do book. Um, vegan recipes, we, we, we do try to do ever so often. Meat-free Monday. So stay tuned. We've got a lot more coming out. I am working on a couple mini cookbooks, um, seven of them in total, which will be available for Amazon Kindle coming out pretty soon. And one of them is um, a vegan book. One is an introduction to the Caribbean grilling. So those things you're going to see rolling out within the next three, four weeks, I would think. Um, Bakes is asking for a sauce recipe. I believe there are three of them already on the website there. Um, yeah, CC is saying that she tried the corn soup recipe. You and that's the thing, right? While I may give you guys the foundation um, for the recipe, I love when I hear you guys say you you tweaked it here and you put this and you add your own little touch. Um, that's the whole idea of cooking and and, and being good at it, right? Um, Pasad is asking, will you be in Toronto? I was in Toronto last weekend. My parents live in Toronto um, during the summer months. So I was out there. My sister lives in Toronto as well. I'm there pretty often. Um, healthy smoothies. There are a few recipes on there. I think maybe four or five in total um, on the website um, and, and here on YouTube. I, I'm trying to get to do some more. Um, we got Kay from uh, St. Kitts living in, live in Miami. Um, guys, if you don't win the cookbook and you want to purchase one for yourself or for a gift or, or maybe, um, I don't know, you just want to support your boy, remember you can always get my cookbook at westindianfoodcompany.com or you can check amazon.com as well as amazon.ca. Um, I really don't try to push it too much to you guys because I don't want you guys, you know, here's the thing, I always get complaints about one thing or the other. And the last thing I want people saying is that I'm forcing people to buy my stuff. By the way, Superman, eh? I bought myself a Father's Day shirt. I waited for nobody to buy anything for me. Uh, yeah, Angel Williams is asking about an oil down. I am hoping to be in Grenada pretty soon, and that is the home of oil down. So, fingers crossed. Vincy in the house. <laughs> um... No, um, I will never do a food truck. You know, that's the thing about food truck. Eh? I don't know how many of you are familiar with um, the food truck scene in Trinidad and Tobago. When I was growing up, um, yeah, that's a while ago, man. We had food trucks. So this creates the past 10 years, 10, 15 years or so with everybody into the food truck thing. That is nothing new to me. I, and I, you know, I really don't want to spend my time inside a, inside an oven kind of thing. You know what I mean? Um, it's not new to me, and I just don't see the need for it, to be honest with you. Um, I will say that I am working on a concept for a couple of restaurants. Um, still don't know location where in the world it's going to be, but um, it's coming up, man. It's coming up. More gains. That secret curry blend. <laughs> yeah, there's been a lot of requests for that um, soon. I'm trying to bring it to a market, so I've got to... Um, I've got to, I've got to hold off sharing it. Kimberly, I like the idea of the okra um, in the cornbread. Love that, man. <laughs> um, body and curry chicken. We've got Sadie. We've got Keisha. Chris Savi. In London, Ontario. My daughter used to go to school in London, Ontario. She was at um, Western for a while there. I used to be there quite often. Uh, Melissa, my friend, how are you doing? <laughs> um, Chris, can you tell us more about your visit to Aruba? Aruba is your know, Aruba is amazing, a beautiful place, wonderful people. Um, as far as a local food scene goes, I I didn't really see it, and then after I got back, everybody was telling me you've got to try the food trucks, and I, I still think. When I think street food, I don't think 
food trucks. That's just me. Um, that said, if you want to eat, and you know, it's it's reminiscent of what we have here in North America. Um, if you want fine dining, you want Italian food, you want steak and stuff like that, you can get all of that. You know, one night I took a walk down across from where the Rio and, and all those big hotels are. That entire strip uh, opposite the hotels were all restaurants. And I kid you not, everyone was packed. Aruba can be a bit expensive. It is a very small island. Um, we did it in, wow, um, one of them just went across there. Um, we did it in less than a day. We did the entire island. One other thing, a couple of things, a couple little tips. When you get out of the airport, as soon as you exit the airport, if you don't already have a rental car, there are guys, um, local guys who can rent cars from. Um, I mean, so you got to be, you got to trust them. But um, we had no problem with our rental car. And two, once you exit the sort of um, immigration or customs area where you get your luggage, hold off. And if you're buying alcohol and, and duty free, hold off until you cross over. Um, when you're exiting, you know, it's super cheap there compared to the inside of the airport. Um, no, excuse me. Um, the beaches are beautiful. One of the things I saw there that I don't necessarily see in some of the other islands that I've visited is um, 11.30 at night, I saw girls jogging. Now, we did have that issue in Aruba 10, 15 years ago with that one girl. But um, for the most part, it seems like a pretty safe island. Um, love me some Aruba. A little bit different than the rest of the Caribbean because... Um, the sort of landscape you don't see a lot of coconut trees you see the dvd trees um the very desert like a lot of um cactus and to be honest there are parts down where there's the bridges the sea bridge as well as the natural sea bridge as well as up where the lighthouse is you think you're on the moon man that place is just rugged you know what i mean um, so as far as, as Aruba is concerned, I highly encourage anyone who's never been there, you'll give it a try. It can be expensive. Seven days, I uh, probably can't do seven days there because it's so small. I, yo, there's a little dog, man. What is he up to? I don't know if you guys can see right there. Trying to jumpy people programming. <laughs> Tell you. Um, but it's a wonderful island. Um, I'll be making uh, sabi since she'll be making a current thrill recipe tomorrow. I haven't, you know, I've been saying this and I said this the last time. Um, I have a new current thrill, very easy um, to put together. I'm going to try and share that. It's summertime now and the house is hot, so I really don't want to turn on the oven, but I may get to it one of these cool um, places. Bird's eye pepper in Toronto. Kimberly, try those Asian markets. They usually have them relatively cheap, a big pack, maybe about a quarter pound for about $253. Um, they got green ones and the red ones. You'll pay more for the red ones. They're called Thai chili. Um, I uh, saw so, uh, tamarind sauce, sweet and sour. So <laughs> Makia, Makaya. Yeah, Heather, you're asking, will I be doing a garden tour this year? Um, I may do two. I just put the garden in. I was late putting in my garden. Um, again, because of my knees and everything else, I busted my knees. I don't know if you guys um, been been on here for the entire duration of the program, but I busted both my knees. So I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to do um, one, a before, and two, and after sometime in maybe mid to late July, August, somewhere around there. So, yeah, you guys can see that. I made some changes in the back there. Um, Escovich recipe, definitely check out the website. We've got one on there. Um, conch salad, still can't get good conch here in Canada, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> Mikaya, Mikia, Mikia, what did I say? Now I'm going to screw it up, man. Well, thank you so much for purchasing the book. Really appreciate that, man. Um, um, bup, 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 bup. What else do we have? I'm just going through the comments. If you have something to ask, I'm trying to go through them. 
Um, Keisha is saying cute dog. Yeah, that's not even my dog. That's my daughter's dog. Um, we have an understanding. I don't bug that dog. That dog doesn't bug me. However, as soon as I'm cooking, there it is again. And it's playing with one of them in the kitchen there. Um, when I'm cooking, that dog sits in front of the stove and watches everything I do. Man, I come to eat. I eat in my office most of the times where I'm at right now. The dog is always there. But we have an understanding. Keep away from me. I'll keep away from you. Because I'm allergic to dogs, to a lot of animals. Um, <laughs> Melissa wants to come and do some gardening, so I'll cook for you. <laughs> yeah, man, that sounds like, yo, wait till all the weeds come in, then we will talk. <laughs> um, new world fan, you know, that is an excellent question. How do you, Chris, how do you feel about not using chemicals or additives in your food ingredients? Prime example is the green seasoning I just did. You can go pick up a bottle of that for three, four dollars in the grocery store for the most part. I don't know what the equivalency would be in Trinidad Tobago or Jamaica or, or Barbados or wherever, but I'm telling you here in Canada, I could pick it up for about four bucks, three, four dollars. One, the color is going to be a sort of a fluorescent color, so I know they added some sort of dye in there. Two, when you read the labels, there's stuff you can't even pronounce in there. And three, the texture of it, you know. Not only is there um, preservatives, but there's um, stabilizers in there as well, too. I'm not a huge, I, you know, I try my best. Yeah, I use canned stuff when I, when I don't have time and for convenience and stuff like that. But I try my best not to use too much canned stuff. I do have a weakness for canned corned beef. I'm from the Caribbean. That's just natural. We all have that weakness for that canned corned beef. But as far as... Um, you're right. Donna is right. The bottle seasoning is frightening. Yeah, you just look at the color. So, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of using. Uh, I, I try to make it as natural as, as possible in most of the dishes that I can. Um, Rodney, yep, fresh is always better, man. You can't beat that. Rico's reef, ho reef, how long will sorrel last in the fridge? I've had sorrel... Um, how would you say that? It hasn't been sweetened. So the pure sorrel, one I can dilute. I've had it in the fridge for about seven months. Easy. Um, you can always um, can corn beef, can corn beef and cabbage. Yeah. Um, for it to last longer, you can always freeze it. And when you're ready to use it, pull it out, toy it out, use it at that point. But as far as sweetened um, sorrel is concerned, I've really never tried to see how long it's going to last. But I would guess at least a month. Easy. Um, good night, Bakes. I know you're all the way in the UK. Um, that book should arrive to you pretty soon. I know it was late getting out, but it's coming. Um, for sauce, yeah, man. Um, Slick66er is asking about a sauce recipe. We've got about three or four of them. I may have mentioned that earlier. Savi Maharaj, thank you so much for that. Um, really appreciate that. <laughs> Terrell Dunlap, yeah, boy. Gotta love that corned beef, especially with hot rice. And, you know, in, um, in Trinidad, they call it Hornaman food, too. Yeah? So just keep that in mind. Hornaman or bachelor food. Um, Chinese fried rice. There's several fried rice recipes on the website. I have a couple more coming up pretty soon. Um, you're most welcome, you world fan. Um, Rico, you're most welcome. Um, Sue Cox, I know. It with sorrel and hibiscus the same. Sorrel is a type of hibiscus. There are different varieties. So if you saw an actual hibiscus, an actual hibiscus can be big like my hand or bigger or a little bit smaller. Sorrel is probably about this big when it's in full bloom. Um, I've seen white, I've seen green, and I've seen red. Um, I wouldn't take hibiscus and make sorrel drink with it because there is a difference. Um, Simply Blissful Living. Hi, Chris. It's Ronnie. Have you ever had Fijian Indian food? No, I haven't. But you know, the funny thing is, I came across a gentleman who's of um, Fijian uh, heritage, and he mentioned quite a bit of the recipes that he saw on my channel. It's pretty similar to the stuff that you guys have over there. So it's one of those places that's on my sort of to-do list to come out there, visit there. And, and, you know, hopefully meet some people who can show me how to cook and stuff like that the way you guys do it. Um, 
uh, why is this person doing that? Guys, you're going to see this person, this free adult thing. Um, you reported um, pornography report. Sorry about that. Um, Dwayne is saying Jamaicans call sorrel hibiscus. Yeah, I know. I know many Jamaicans who call it sorrel. Sorrel is sorrel throughout the Caribbean, man. I think it's one of those things where I was in Germany, um, in Frankfurt, I think it was, and I saw it being called hibiscus there, and they treat it as a hot drink, a tea. Um, so, guys, it has been 35 minutes, 36 minutes. I man got to jump off soon to go and organize something for the belly before it gets too late. It's summertime now, so it's still bright as day outside. I know it's whatever o'clock where you guys are at, but it is still nice outside, so I may go in and get some teeth and go in the backyard. Um, Jamaicans call sorrel hibiscus. We already been through that camera. And can you use, for example, a KitchenAid mixer using the whisk to mist the ingredients to make pone? Yeah, I don't see why not. Um, pone can be a bit tough to work on the hand there because it's a sort of a, a very thick batter. Um, so yeah, I don't see why not, Cam. Um, how savvy? How often? Savvy is asking how often do you have this live? Um, if you guys see me looking across here all the time, it's because that's where the comments are showing up for me. Um, we try to do this every Thursday, seven p.m. Eastern. Um, but as I, I mentioned earlier, there's been about five. five. <laughs> Roger, you know this is Superman, eh? <laughs> I like that. Every Thursday, 7 p.m., um, we try to do it. But the last few weeks, I haven't had time. Um, tamarind pepper sauce recipe. There is a tamarind sauce recipe, Melissa, on the website. Um, it's pretty good. Um, I may have another one coming out soon, something a bit more chunky. And I have a tamarind and charm um, video coming out pretty soon as well, too. <laughs> Let's. Let's get a show on the Food Channel. Yeah, you know, that would be good. But the audience here, you guys, you know what I mean? Um, I love this Food Channel. I won't be able to do this. You know what I mean? So kind of liking what I'm doing here as well, too. Yeah, Keisha, do try that, um, that chicken salad, the tuna as well as the chicken salad that I posted. It is really good. Um, any good spots in Jamaica you know of? You know, the last time I was in Jamaica was about six years ago. Memory isn't all that great. Plus, there was alcohol involved, well, Guinness, lots of Guinness involved. So I don't remember too much. Um, best coffee, Montego Bay. Best curry goat I had was in the grill. Best team fish with crackers and okra was in the capital. Kingston, yeah. Um, I had some wicked coconut shrimp in New Mon New New Kingston. I don't remember the actual place's name. I have a video on here. Um, you may want to check that video out. I think there might be two videos. What city do I live live in? Eden. I am in Hamilton, Ontario, which is about an hour west of Toronto. So, for instance, if you're leaving, if you fly into Toronto and you're trying to get to Niagara Falls, you got to go by me before you get to Niagara Falls. Um, if I'm flying out of Canada, I have two options. I have Buffalo, New York, which is an hour away, and I have Toronto, which is an hour away, both airports. Rita, hi, good night. Thank you so much, Rita Thomas. Um, a dessert. I don't do many desserts because I'm not a sweets person. I try to... I try, you know, most of what you guys see me make here is majority of times it's things that I like, and that's really the basis for stuff, right? Uh, I've never been to Bermuda. Um, you know, Bermuda is one of those places that's still cold in the winter months, so, and I usually travel in the winter months. I ain't trying to leave cold to go cold, you know what I mean? But supposedly it's really beautiful. I've never been there, though. Um, <laughs> thank you, Sunshine. I appreciate that. Uh, no, there. Um, Eden is asking about maintaining the garden in the winter. Come, 
September, October, that's the end of gardening. You leave it there, and then you start back again fresh in the new year in the springtime. Um, I don't have a um, I don't have a greenhouse. I wish I did. I'd be doing some um, some gardening during during the um. Melissa, you really look um trying to trying to on food, but Melissa is talking about golden ray margarine. We <laughs> I don't use golden ray at all, man. Um, too salty. I, I try to cut back on the amount of salt that I use. Plus, it's supposedly loaded with cholesterol and all that stuff like that. So I ain't trying to, to go down that route. Friends, it's been a pleasure as usual. If you can hit me that thumbs up one more time. Remember the two cookbooks, book number one, the soup cleanse. Book number two, little old me on the cover here. And by the way, guys, I don't know if you guys know this, but this cookbook won a Gourmand Award. Um, little old me, little old you guys, we won a Gourmand Award. And if you don't know what a Gourmand Award is when it comes to cookbooks, it's like the Oscars for cookbooks. So it's a big deal. We won a Gourmand Award with that. So you can get that at westindianfoodcompany.com or enter your name right here. Leave a comment and it'll be automatically entered. Well, this is an interesting question. I'm having trouble telling the difference between habaneros and scotch bonnet. My, my grocer has the same problem. I really don't want to spoil or frick up pronouncing your name. Adwa? Adwa. What I'm going to do, I'm going to try to get my my hands on both peppers, habanero and scotch bonnet. Tune in next week, and I will have actual peppers to show you the difference, and it would be easier for me to explain as well, too. Most of the times, habaneros are red or orange in color when they're fully ripe, and, you know, um, that doesn't help either. I'll have to do it. Give me one week, and I'll get those peppers. Um, Adam Carter, I really appreciate that, man. Um, oh, Shonda, um, you know, people talk about <clears throat> if you can't get scotch bonnet peppers and, 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 and if you can get habanero peppers, there isn't much of a difference in flavor. Now, the heat profile, yes, yeah, scotch bonnet is more hot. You know, to be honest with you, the habaneros have a lovely fruity sort of undertone as well, too, so it can work. Um, how do you like London? London? I don't know. Maybe it's because I was spending so much money to have my daughter there at school. <laughs> I didn't care for London. But it's a beautiful little town. Um, I have some friends down there that I usually go have coffee with from time to time. And they're big into gardening and stuff like that. So I'm usually down. It's just a little bit too far away, man. For it's about an hour and a half almost. An hour and a half, hour and three quarter. Oh, oh, you mean Hamilton? Yo, Hamilton is an up and coming city. It's the fastest growing city in all of Canada, I believe, when it comes to the housing market and all that stuff like that. New restaurants opening up every week. Um, it's really, it's, it's a really nice buzz. We had the stigma of being the steel capital of Canada for a very long time. And um, you know, people still think we're polluted and stuff like that. But Hamilton is beautiful, man. Lord, we're just the, we have the most waterfalls per um, for area in all of Canada, lots of waterfalls, a lot of trails and stuff like that. If you into that stuff, um, friends, I am going to sign off now. My man's got to get something in the belly and then rest up a bit. Don't forget, winners, please contact me via caribbeanpod.com or email email me directly, chris at caribbeanpod.com. Always a pleasure to have you guys here in the kitchen. Well, we're in my office. Until next week. Adios.